All right. Today we'll be working on a project on scheduling website backups with system D timer. Right. System CTL is a user facing command line tool used to interact with system D. Right. System D is the underlying system and service manager of Linux. Well, system D is like the father. So you go, you go visit the, the father in his house and you don't see him in his, he's in his room, but then his son brings uh, food and refreshment for you and you're eating. You've not seen the father, but the son is uh, the user interface, the, the person you interact with that gives you uh, what you want or probably what you came for. So system D is the online overall system and service manager in Linux. But when you are working as a system administrator, most times you'll be working with system CTL, also known as system control, because CTL there means control. The first thing you want to do when scheduling a website backup, right? And it's important to schedule a website backup because sometimes your main website gets corrupted and you want to replace it it's good to have a backup so the first thing you want to do is to create a sample website directory you can read all of this if you want to but this you copy this i think what i wrote there is the fact that why i'm using <coughs> this var ww website is that a common practice is to store website in the directory var ww website and not on the home page right uh it is not recommended to store backup files and websites data directly in the home page the home page is usually for personal files and configuration uh, it's not appropriate to store things like critical data like a website or a backup so which is why we're putting it in this directory and the, the dash p over there what it does is that if any of these two directory don't exist without this dash p we won't be able to create my website we'll have to do it one after the other so make the r var make the r ww make the r my website but if you want to do everything at once you have to add your dash p and that is created now we want to put some content in the website uh, so that the website is not empty so we'll paste this there. <clears throat> so we are putting this HTML code there and that'll be our website. We can check what we have. And that's one habit you need to master. Whenever you do something, learn to confirm if what you did was done correctly so that your mistakes will not pile up, right? As you can see here, we created a new file. When we echo the new file is what index.html. Now when we do cat, cat means concatenate. You want to see what's inside the index.html and that's our website. It's just a header that says welcome to my website. Right? With the title of sample website. So we've created our website now. The next thing is to create the folder where we want the website to be saved and that's the backup folder all right we've created that now we have to create a script the script that will run the backup now the whole project is about creating a script and a timer that runs that script at a certain period Right, it can be every 24 hours, it can be every minute, depending on what you want. Now, this is the script that does the job for us. Now, we create it by using Nano. We could have used Torch, but Nano creates and then opens up the new created script so that we can put content in it. As you can see, we have our content in it. So, we are pasting this code. Let's copy this first. Um, so what this does is 
it's telling us that we are storing the website location as a variable called source dir and then we're storing the backup location as a variable called uh, backup directory or, or backup dir so let's just copy this paste here right come down copy the remaining code i'll try my best to explain all the code to you i don't know why that one is showing green i think it's because of what i deleted why are you showing green bro all right maybe maybe i should just all right let's see what's going on now all right we're good so what i deleted was a comment if you notice it had hashtag in front of it so it didn't mean anything it was just explaining the line so basically this timestamp is telling us the date we, when we want the backup to happen all right then we created a subdirectory and this is the command this command copies the content of the source directory to the backup cpdm means copy right copying this directory Dash R should mean recursive. It means it's copying everything inside here and it's putting it inside here. Um, another way to copy is to use this. Optionally, you can copy using this. Right? Using the tar command. Then, you can also, at, at the end of your copy, at the end of the backup, you want this to be printed to the command line. And then you want... Uh, the log file backup that log to show that that backup existed so you can at the end of the day confirm using these two methods that your backup was successful right so that's it we'll press our control x y enter and we're out <clears throat> we've created our script for the backup the next thing you want to do is to make the backup what executable if you want to know what that means read everything we have here i'm not going to go through it if i do this video will not end so remember our, our backup script is called what backup script.sh just so that we are not making any mistake i type it again so it's now executable in other words it can be run <coughs> right next thing you want to do is to create what a system md service unit now what this does is that it's responsible for defining the service that runs your script it specifies the path to the script as well all right in the exact exact start line so exact start line tells you where the script is my script is on my home so home.ubuntu.script so if i come here ls my script is here but if i do present working directory it gives me the path home ubuntu then my script which is why it is here like that this is just a description of what this this service unit does this is the service unit all right now this multi-user agent all it does is that the backup will only happen when the system is ready to be used by more than one users all right more than one user rather so that's what that means so one shot here means that the backup happens just once and then the process stops it doesn't repeat until the the timer which we will show you comes again for it to back up maybe the next one four hours it doesn't keep backing up it's not a continuous process it's once and it stops for the next time All right okay so we copy this okay we're not copying we have to create the, the the service we have to create the system md service units by running this command so what this command does is there are several ways to create a, the, a, a document you can use touch but you can also use nano and the advantage of using nano is it creates a document and it also opens the document for you to edit. We're using sudo because without sudo, this, this, we cannot create document in this folder, etc, systemmd folder. You need to have super user privilege to do. 
now we have we'll put that code there it's open now we'll paste this service unit file or commands or script whatever you want to call it control x y enter <clears throat> now that that is done we need to verify i told you whenever you do a particular step you need to check right that what you did worked so that if it did not work you can fix the error before going further and adding more errors to it pseudo system CTL start so we're starting the service we created now the next thing to do is to check if the service is running if it isn't we stop and fix it if it is we're good as you can see the service is running how do we know right started web website backup service as you can see that tells us it has started website backup that service deactivated deactivated me here means it ran once told you once it backs up once it stops in other words as it is right now if we go and cut our backup this doc this 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 welcome to my website has already been backed up so let's try it. let's check where is so let's where's the path this is the path to the backup so let's copy it and let's do ls right we're supposed to see index.html that we created in in the in the my websites folder we're supposed to see it now in the backups even though we didn't put it there but because we ran that service uh, unit file as you can see it has been backed up this is it here it has its own unique name and I will tell you why the name is like that. <clears throat> in our script, we gave a template for naming our backup, backed up file. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Give me a minute. So, this is the, the, this is the template. We said when it creates the backup, the name should be What's the name? My website backup hyphen the time that the back backup occur. Right? So if you come here, my website backup hyphen the time that the backup occur. Today's date is 23 September 3rd. As you can see. So that timestamp there is there to make the file unique. Every time it gets backed up, since time doesn't repeat itself, the, the file name will always be unique. And you'll be able to track the oldest from the latest file right now that that is done we're sure backup has happened but that's not the goal of the project remember the goal of the project is to schedule the backup It's not just to backup but to schedule it so uh, where are we going next so to do that we have to create a system MD timer unit have you noticed system MD is everywhere that's because like we said, system MD is the underlying system and service manager of, of Linux. Right? It's like how you have a company, you build a hotel, you're not around to manage it, and you employ a manager. So system MD is the manager of our Linux. Is that simple? Now where's the timer? Now to 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 create a timer to always run your backups, you can um you create a file called website backup.timer. Website backup can be anything. You can call it Ronaldo.timer. It just has to be .timer. You create it using sudo nano so that the file opens. And you put this, uh, this unit file defines when the backup should run. As you can see, this here means it should run 20 means 8 o'clock, right? 8 p.m. every day. This describes it. This gives the time. That's not all, but let's just paste this first. And lastly, we put this there. Timer the target. So 
what this does is hold on this is targeting the this file that time I is targeting this file right and so that it will run so on calendar here specifies the delivery run at 8 p.m. You can add this to your comments. Yeah, when you're making your own documentation, because I expect you to make your own documentation, you can add it to your comment. After saving the timer unit file, right? Reload the system MD to recognize the new unit. So we have to reload. Now we have to log out of here. Control X. Y enter, then we reload. And we know why we're reloading to recognize this new time unit. Now we've created the unit, we have to enable the unit and start it. And what does enabling do? It makes sure that whenever that we boot the system, the timer starts. We don't have to go and manually start it. Right? This proves that it has been configured correctly. And then we start the timer. We're starting the timer manually for because this is a test. Otherwise, you don't need to start the timer. It will start. Um pseudo system CTO status. Like I said, always check the status of your steps. So you check if it shows active with a green line, it means everything is fine active and waiting so it means our timer is active but another way we can confirm that our timer is active we can list our timers right so it should be somewhere here just look for the names look for the names that's it website backup at timer website backup at service yeah this is the timer unit is a service unit and how many oops that's it the time we expected to back up and right here where um it's uh 7 59 that's now it's eight o'clock as you can see all right where is it it's saying we have one hour I think the time zone, the UTC it's using is one hour ahead of my, my, where I am. That's why. Otherwise, it should be zero minutes. This UTC is time one hour ahead of my, my zone where I stay. All right. So this will have to be 21 for it to be time to back up automatically again. Right. At least now we see it exists. Another way. Hold on. Hold on. Give me a minute. There's something I'm looking for. Okay, I already checked it here. All right, that's fine. Sorry about that. So lastly, we can check the log files, right? To see, these are several ways. I'm just showing you several ways that you can confirm that your backup is occurring or has occurred, right? Um, but then the, here's a brief example of what uh, a log looks like so let me do nano log dot txt right oh wow i wish it's i wish it um but that's how it looks like i just i, I wish it was colored right Maybe if I make it HTML, will it be colored? But it won't. All right, but that's what, how a log looks like. A log has timing, date, and tells you when things happen. But so let's check the log file. 
for our backup. Uh, to verify the logs and check if the update to your backup script is successful, you can use various methods and commands in Linux. Right, you can use the cat command. So this is cat var log backup the log. Why, why am I using var log backup the log? Right, this backup the log was configured in the script. So let's go back to the script. Uh, you can see we redirected log to the log file. We said it should be stored in the back of the log. So it's not random. These things are not random. It was configured in the script. So if we come here, do this. We only have one log and it says backup of website created, blah, 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 blah. You understand? So these are the several ways we can confirm that our backup was successful. And that will be the end of this video. All right, the other ways to check if what we had was a lot, we could have used less instead of cat. Where is it? Where is it? That was cat. We could have used less here, right? And we could have also used grep, right? If what we had was a lot. But then uh, take your time, pause this video, um, go through the notes and read it. It will help you. So uh, now that we're done, we have to disable the timer. All right, disable the timer. We can disable the after disabling, uh, stop it and come to the backup service and disable both as well. Now you can exit and make sure you put off your EC2 instance so you don't rack up bills you don't have to terminate it just stop it and that will be the end of this video i hope this was helpful um see you another time